Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Um, and today I'd like to go over something that's, uh, it's becoming more of a trend in Hollywood uh, these days, but it, it's not, it wasn't uncommon even before, and that's the idea of race swapping characters uh, from, you know, one ethnicity to another, or from one gender to another, uh, gender swapping and then race swapping. Um, and there's been a lot of backlash lately because of the uh, Halle Bailey, not Halle Berry, Halle Bailey uh, casting for the Little Mermaid live action remake that is going to be coming out. Um, and everybody, you know, a lot of people are very up in arms about it. But, you know, I, I've said in a previous video that I really don't give a shit. Uh, if they're actually going to cast, as long as the person can sing, that's really the point behind it, because you want the, there's a lot of musical numbers in The Little Mermaid, and you want somebody that's going to be able to do that, otherwise you're going to have to hire another actor uh, to provide the singing voice, which is actually what they did for the, uh, for some of the animated films uh, when they were doing them, because it didn't matter, they could record the song, and then they could just do that afterwards, as long as the singer's voice was relatively close to the actresses. Um, but I think there's some misconceptions uh, about race swapping in films, uh, and it's it's really from one of three factors, um, and those boil down to uh, the idea of updating or changing the setting. Um, you know, because sometimes if you change if you if you if you're remaking a film and you're changing the the setting fairly drastically, or you're changing the tone or something like that, uh, or if you're even changing it from uh, a novel or another piece of media, uh, you might want to change the ethnicity of the characters depending on where that might take place. Um, the other thing is acting talent, uh, which uh, is a big reason, and then the last one, which is the one that a lot of people tend to focus on, is the uh, race baiting for uh, you know diversity hires and you know for, you know diversity for diversity's sake, uh, as opposed to uh, doing anything on merit. And I'm going to cover that one last. I'm going to try and go through these one at a time. Now. Uh, Looking into uh, the first one, which is the the changing of the setting, um, now or the, the or the changing of uh, various points in the story. Now, when you're adapting something from another medium, like a book or a video game or uh, a short story or something, uh, you're gonna wanna. There, there's going to be things that are going to be changed in the transition process because they're two different mediums, going from a written medium uh, or a uh, a video game medium to a film medium. Um, but when you see stuff like that, uh, a lot of the times uh, it has to do with director's choices and aesthetics. Uh, a great example is the idea of uh, Starship Troopers. Now, I like the, ori the original Starship Troopers, I think, is a, is a pretty good movie. I, I enjoy it. It's from the same director that did Robocop. Um, but the movie itself is much different uh, than the book that it is based off of. Uh, in many ways, but one of the major ways is the uh, lead character Rico, or the uh, the protagonist. Um, in the books, he is portrayed as Filipino, uh, whereas in the movie he is Caucasian. And I can see the reasoning behind doing that because the whole idea of the film was again because the the director likes to do this kind of tongue in cheek stuff a lot, like the first RoboCop, is the idea that. Um, He's very, it's supposed to be kind of like a, a soulless, kind of like valley guy, dumb jock kind of character. And you always kind of picture that character as being uh, Caucasian for the most part. Uh, for whatever reason, it a lot of the times it tends to make that character far more believable uh, in that role. For whatever reason, it's just because of you know the public image of it. Uh, now they could have hired somebody that was Filipino and see, or, or somebody that was uh, Asian in, in some respect, and maybe could pass as Filipino um, and done something like that. But it probably wouldn't have had the same effect. Uh, and you can look at, you know, other stuff in kind of that same vein where the the stuff was changed. There was a, uh, a version, I, I believe it was called O, like the, the actual title of it was O, but it was uh, supposed to be an, an urban retelling of Othello. So obviously Othello in the original play was Caucasian, but because this is they're changing this to an urban setting, uh, he was changed to African American, which again makes sense because you're changing the setting, you're changing the time period, and all the other stuff is, is going to change. So, 
when you do stuff like that, it at least makes sense, and people usually don't have a problem with it. A lot of a lot of those films were also made, you know, 15, 20 years ago before we had outrage culture. Um, the next one is uh, race change based on merit. Now, there's a there's quite a few examples of this, and it it makes sense because you can say, okay, this guy is a really, really, really good actor, and he can pull off this role, and it's really not indicative of anything uh, if you change this because this guy is such a good actor. Uh, you know, you can see that with Will Smith and I Am Legend. Now, the original uh, movie, which was called Omega Man, uh, which came out, I believe, in the late 70s, starred Charlton Heston, and the book that it was based off of, which was called I Am Legend, um, uh, also had a Caucasian main character, but they replaced him with Will Smith, and Will Smith was huge when I, when I Am Legend came out. I believe that was... Uh, that was after he had done uh, a lot of his, you know, more higher profile, like uh, Pursuit of Happiness and stuff like that. Uh, so he was he was pretty high up. So everybody wanted to get him for a role, and that made sense. Uh, so you know, you had stuff like that. You had Lawrence Fishburne coming in to play Perry White in the Superman movies, even though he was more of a, even though he was basically a side character. Perry White in, in the comics and in the previous Superman films was white, but it didn't really matter because Lawrence Fishburne is a really good actor. Um, and again, this is something that you can see in a lot of other stuff. There was, uh, apparently they came out with some casting rumors, or not rumors, but they were confirmed around the time of the first Amazing Spider-Man that came out, uh, where, uh, community star Danny Pudi was, uh, or Putty, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, I apologize, uh, P-U-D-I, so, um, he was actually uh, a very, very close second to Andrew Garfield, and they chose Andrew Garfield over him basically almost almost barely, barely over him. They really liked uh, Danny Pudi's performance, and he's Indian. He is not white. Peter Parker traditionally is white, but they went with Andrew Garfield. But it shows that he had enough merit at the time to play the character. The other downside was he was also 32 at the time of the uh, the, the casting call, so he was a bit too old, um, even though he could play a lot younger. Uh, so th there, there's a lot of different things that go into uh, certain types of, uh, of race swapping and, and gender swapping as well. Um, you know, you had stuff like uh, Catwoman in 2004. Now, that movie was in development hell for a number of years. Originally, it had Michelle Pfeiffer attached, and in the comics, Catwoman is white. Uh, however, uh, when they did the Halle Berry film, they attached her because I think she was coming off Monster's Ball at the time, which was an Academy Award win for her. Um, and then she went and did that. Uh, I'm assuming they just paid her a buttload of money because that was probably the only reason why anybody would think that script was good. But... It's a very interesting uh, kind of dynamic in that sense, where you know, you essentially, you know, you're you're trading up actors. You're like, okay, you know, we got this really, really, really good actor, but they're not the same ethnicity as the character from the comics or the books or whatever. But if they have a really good performance and the PR department can show that then a lot of the times the movie will work out. Again, you look at stuff like I Am Legend. Um, even though I think a lot of people didn't didn't know the original material as well at that time. So uh, that's another thing that factors into it as well, is if it's a more well-known character and it's more high profile, again, like the Little Mermaid thing, uh, people get pissed about it. Because the thing is, is that when you're doing a remake... When, you, when you're doing a remake, especially if it's of an iconic film, which most of the time it is, um, and you race swap the main character, it looks bad, especially when that character is so iconic looking. You, when you think of Ariel from Little Mermaid, you think of, um, you know, a redhead. You think of a redhead. Don't, I wouldn't say ginger, but you, you see a you know a redheaded girl, the the green tail, the seashell bra, all that stuff. You think of that. You think of the crab. You think uh, uh, Sebastian. You think of the uh, not the clownfish. I think it's a cuttlefish. Um, but you you think of all those characters and how they look. Uh, the villain Ursula. All that stuff. You think of how it looks. And I think it's kind of funny they also cast Melissa McCarthy as Ursula because I think that is a perfect casting. <laughs> Uh, if you're going to do it, even though I think that the live-action remakes are garbage, you can see one of my other videos for that. But 
now we get to the one that's kind of the hot button, which is the the gender slash race swap for diversity's sake to pander. Now, I did a video uh, a while back on demographics and why female-centric reboots don't work generally, uh, because a lot of the times you are trying to market a female-led film to a male audience. Uh, and that is not, or you're trying to market a female-led film in a ma mostly male-followed franchise. You know, they mostly cater to men in terms of the demographic. And you're now catering to women and you are leaving the men behind. So your movie is not going to do well because you're alienating your core demographic. In this sense, what they want to do is they want to bring in uh, diversity characters uh, so that they can, because for whatever reason they think that it somehow attracts uh, the fringe people into the franchise. Another really good example of this is uh, the Spider-Man films uh, from the MCU, where you have uh, Mary Jane, who is now, I think her name is Michelle, but they say MJ a lot of the films. I haven't seen Far From Home yet, but... Basically, she's the new version of Mary Jane, but she's black. And then you also have uh, Ned Leeds, uh, who is, I can't remember the actor's name, uh, but he's, uh, I believe he's Filipino, but he grew up in Hawaii, so I don't know if there's a mix there, but he's he's uh, of Asian ethnicity, uh, as opposed to, I believe Ned Leeds in the comics was white. So they're switching these characters up, and Sony has a nasty little habit of this, mostly, uh, but they're switching them up uh, in order, it feels like they're switching them up in order to pander or to appeal uh, to fringe groups because they say, oh, there's a black chick in the movie, I'm going to go watch the movie. That is, that it is one of the dumbest things uh, to think, and I don't put it past Hollywood to think this because they're, they are idiots for the most part uh, in terms of uh, how they do these things uh, because they look more on the merit of a think tank or they look on the merit of an echo chamber as opposed to looking on the merit of uh, actual people that are trying to create things and people that are trying to do things that are original. Uh, and, you know, again, I went over this in a previous video about the lack of originality in Hollywood, but when you do that type of stuff, when you pander like that, you can see stuff like that in Star Wars The Last Jedi, too, which didn't work, by the way, uh, where they cast uh, Kelly Marie Tran as Rose Tico in order to try to appeal to the Asian market because there were no Asian characters uh, in Star Wars up to that point, or at least not any prevalent ones. Um, and the Asian audiences knew it was pandering, and they thought it was a, it, I thought it was shit. And ironically, the entire purpose was to pander to China, and Kelly Marie Tran is Vietnamese, uh, even though I, I'm sure she could probably pass for for Chinese, you know, d depending on what film she would be in. But the point is that when Hollywood does these diversity hires or they gender swap or they race swap uh, nowadays you have to question it because of the ideolo the ideology of what they they represent now of what they want to do um, and the more that you look at some of these things uh, the more that it's 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 becoming more and more apparent uh, that this is this is their new model essentially in in some ways for using their large AAA productions to pander to uh, fringe groups, and it's not a good idea. And I think a lot of this lies on the people that are creating the movies. Maybe not necessarily the studios, but the directors, whoever is involved with the castings. Um, but again, you still do have examples of people that are getting these jobs on merit. And the only way to know for sure that certain things were not diversity hires is to see the finished pro yeah, excuse me, to see the finished product. If Halle Bailey does a great job and sings her lungs out and plays the character well, then I don't think anybody's gonna care. But if you see uh you know, the PR people coming out and asking her questions and she's saying that everybody that says that, this is the other thing, is the PR problem in Hollywood. I think that's even, that's an even bigger issue. Um, but if they start doing PR rounds with her 
and they start asking her all these things about, oh, have you heard about the people that say that, you know, they're, they're pissed off that uh, Ariel is getting race swapped. Um, and she says, oh, well, that's just racist white people. Uh, then you're, you're going to drive your film into the ground because it's going to be a PR disaster. It's going to be like Captain Marvel, except you're not going to have the Marvel bump. Uh, that Captain Marvel did because again that film had very uh, good timing and uh, in terms of when it came out because they knew what was going to happen with it um, if it if they tried to release it after Endgame um, or too far before but you're you're gonna if you if more and more press junkets start becoming more and more like Captain Marvel. Uh, you're going to see Disney start taking hits. You're going to see them start taking a lot of hits. And personally, I think it's well overdue at this point uh, for a lot of their stuff to start taking uh, taking hits. But it, I think a lot of it depends on how this actress uh, handles herself when they put her in front of a camera and put a microphone to her and say, oh, what do you think about this and that? If she gives, the, if she gives good answers, if she gives good PR answers, and what I mean by that is, you don't demonize the fans. The people that are are upset are people that are probably pretty close to the original film, and it, either you know they love it or, or you know it was part of their childhood or something like that. A lot of those people are fans of this movie, and if you can prove to those people that you're willing to commit to the character despite the physical differences, uh, then. I think they'll come, most of them will come around. You'll still get the curmudgeon people that aren't going to give a shit. But if you do good PR, you can salvage this in terms of, uh, you know, the public perception. But if you don't, if you decide to tell people to go screw themselves and that, you know, people's opinions don't matter depending on the color of their skin, then uh, this is going to be just a one big, long, drama-filled train wreck until this movie comes out, and then nobody's going to give a shit after that. Um, but, I mean, that's just my opinion. I'd like to know your opinions on, you know, the idea of race or gender swapping uh, in films. Uh, leave your uh, thoughts in the comments. Again, I like to read them. I like to know what you're thinking. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?